Okay, I just finished up finally deep diving through some of our afternoon model data to include some of our latest Velocity Anomaly products for when the MJO will come sweeping across the Atlantic Tropical Basin. And to tell you the truth, even though models are looking a little lackluster on the tepid side, on the modest side, there is absolutely no way that once I show you what I've seen, that we blank the month of October. Something has to be coming. Welcome back to the Weather Center, everybody. Happy Hump Day Wednesday. It is October 8th, 2025. I'm late, so we're going to skip the formalities, just jump right into the update for the sake of time. It's been a very busy last several days, but I told you, I promised y'all we were going to get a tropical update up, and here it is. So if you are brand new to the channel, it would mean the world to all of us as a part of the Weather Center community. If you kindly consider hitting that subscribe button, I need a little nudge. You all are the little nudge. Give that like button a little nudge. Share this information with folks you believe would benefit from it. And let me know in the comment section down below what it is your thoughts are, where you're tuning in from. If you just want to say hello, the next couple days I finally see my schedule toned down a little bit. So I will be reaching back to every single one of you out there. And by the way... If you haven't done so already, it would really mean the world if you do consider hitting that subscribe button because we are getting very close to our 20,000 subscriber milestone. And you know what? I'm thinking of maybe doing a giveaway. We'll see. If we can get to that 20,000K milestone or that 20,000 follower milestone, I may host a giveaway. We'll see what that is, what we can conjure up behind the scenes. Let me know in the comments down below if there's anything you can think of that I can finally give back to you all as a part of the Weather Center community. But I'm talking way too much. Let's go over to National Hurricane Center's homepage. We've got what I'm calling... Slopical Storm Jerry. No, but we have Tropical Storm Jerry out there. Still a 60 mile an hour tropical storm and it is beginning to deepen. Central pressure has come down a few millibars throughout the day today and sustained winds have gone up from the 50 miles an hour we woke up to earlier this morning and it is slowly trying to pump the brakes. It was ripping off towards the west at about 25 to 27 miles an hour. Now we have come down to 23 miles an hour and this is the 5 o'clock advisory. And then we've got this little thing in the Bay of Campeche still holding steady for a 10 for 10 split of forming up either between the next two days or out to the next seven days. This thing is going to crash into the eastern shores of Mexico, dumping torrential rainfall. They're probably going to build a good quality four, six, if not eight inches of rain in some very isolated spots, especially in the lower terrain features on the lee side of the mountains that are just inland along the eastern side of Mexico. And then we are done, but that is going to be one spot that we're going to consistently watch. Stick with me to the end of the video. I promise I'll break it all down for you. This is the latest track from National Hurricane Center as of 5 o'clock. This came out about an hour and a half, two hours ago, give or take. We have tropical storm watches in effect for the Leeward Islands, pretty much the majority of them there. And you can see that the forecast cone has gratuitously shrunk. Before, it was much wider and there were some discontinuities with our hurricane models. We still haven't quite got the recon data in there just yet. They are surveying the storm right now as we speak. So by 0Z tonight, if not 6Z, first thing tomorrow morning, very early morning hours of your Thursday, we'll have that fresh recon data interpolated and digested by the models. And we'll start to really get a handle on what things are going to be doing. Half say and B, do give this a fighting chance of reaching hurricane strength, albeit the west northwesterly shear that it's encountering right now is going to persist. It's probably going to remain a malaligned and dis combobulated system, but it does have the opportunity as it gets out of the tropics into the subtropics to try to take advantage of lesser wind shear the further north it goes and become a hurricane. Don't look at the H wharf. The H wharf still thinks this thing is going to become a category four. I don't know about that. When you look at the true color satellite shot, this is why I have coined it Slopical Storm Jerry. You can see that the low level spin has, for all intents and purposes, raced out in front of the main batch of convection lopsided to the southeast quadrant of the storm. Although, as the sun has gone down, there goes the Terminator line, the day night line, racing off to the left hand side of the screen. It does look we're getting some pretty healthy bursts of convection right overhead, so perhaps that's a signal that this is going to take advantage of that diurnal maximum phase 
Quick crash course for the sake of time, diurnal maximum is different for tropical systems. For the land, weather phenomena, it's during the daytime when the land gets hotter than the surface of the water around it, creates daytime thunderstorms. With tropical systems, since they're over the water, what happens is as the sun sets, you focus the leftover incoming radiation, the sunlight that's left over from the day in, from the daytime heating underneath the system. It allows it to intensify as the surrounding areas cool, becomes a bit of a maximized focal point of localized lift. Basically, it just really kicks up the internal combustion motor of these systems. Taking you through real quick, showing you the shear pattern, we got to bust through this corridor of very intense west-northwesterly shear right in through here. You can see that there is an anti-cyclone out in front of the system right there, a little high height center, and that's what's helping to buffet it right in the face as it continues to move generally towards the west-northwest. It's getting wind shear pretty much blasted right in its face as it continues to move more towards the Leeward Islands and eventually curving off towards the north. Now we should begin to see a bit of a relief in the wind shear as we go through time as the ridge begins to build in and we start to focus a bit more of that jet stream energy back over the eastern United States, which is one thing I want to talk to you about here very quickly. But first, this just came out. And to tell you the truth, I have my thoughts on it. Now, after looking at some of our Velocity Anomaly products, I really do think we could be on to something here. However, I don't like to do this. If you read my community post yesterday evening, I told you full-heartedly, as transparent as I could be, I'm not a fan of moving the goalpost, moving the end zone, or trying to cheat the system, if you will. When I lock in a forecast, I like to leave it as is and let it ride. But based on what's about to happen up the eastern United States, a very anomalously strong trough, cold frontal system, almost a winter-esque system is expected to develop. It's not going to be winter-style cold, but we are possibly looking at cold air penetration and dry air intrusion as far south as the Cayman Islands and Jamaica. Because of that, we're going to see sinking motions produced from that continental dry air. It's very stable air. It's from up north. It's from the poles, the mid-latitudes, making it all the way down in the tropics. And then on top of that, as that trough really amplifies, digs in over the eastern gulf over us here in central Florida and then back up the east coast, we're probably going to squash that original time frame of the 12th through the 17th. We'll have to see what happens. We'll see exactly what shakes out. But if you think about and if I were to draw it in, if we have a trough extending in like so, you can imagine that we're going to have wind shear racing through the pattern like so, and that dry air that's also going to be building on the back side of it is really going to dig in towards where our Central American gyre would try to form up a storm. However, comma... I think I'm simply going to nudge my dates to the right ever so slightly. I think by about October 15th, October 16th, maybe the tail end of our original projection, the 17th of October, out till about towards the end of this graphic here, the 23rd, the 25th, to the 28th. Particularly the 17th to the 23rd is what I'm really pinpointing, but there's some margin of error there based on the conditions we're going to have to toy around with. That's when I really do think something has the potential to cook off in the Caribbean, and our models are also seeing it too. This is the latest European model from earlier today, and if you take a look as we go through time, this is the 13th, and I want to show you the mid-level flow really quick before we continue on, and I know I'm taking up your time. I'm sorry. I want to get this video out for you all, but I also want to talk you through everything. So if you look at the mid-level flow at 850 millibars, we've got a high pressure there spinning clockwise, there's that potential pseudo nor'easter lacking the snowfall riding up the mid-Atlantic coast as we go into this upcoming Monday, next Monday, and then take a look at the wind flow screaming out of the north-northwest there. If I had to do a quick analysis of where our 850 millibar front was, the front is down here. The front is way down to the south, and this is your mid-level front. And when you think about it three-dimensionally, when you go up in the atmosphere from the surface to 925, 850, your fronts stack back. So your surface front is more than likely going to be positioned somewhere right in through here, digging into the Western Caribbean through the Yucatan Channel. We may even see some drying out ongoing for Cuba. Much of the Bahamas, the Cayman Islands could be in for some decent weather, as well as Jamaica and maybe the westernmost periphery of Haiti. Yucatan, Belize, you're also going to get in some of the dry air action so honestly we're all looking at a pretty strong fall blast here very soon but then that's when things start to shake up a little bit 
So watch what happens on the right-hand side of the screen here as we get some weak tropical waves meandering through the pattern. The Euro, yes, yeah, see, look at this. First off, um, before we start talking tropics, look at this pattern here. Look at all this northerly wind flow going all the way down to Central America. There's your front. Front has really dug in. That is a powerful system. Mind you, this is 10 days out, give or take, so this is probably going to change. But regardless, this is an impactful punch of polar air from way up north, and it's intruding so far to the south. You typically don't see it that far to the south in October, so something is up. Something is behaving like it's not supposed to. But then, as we clear the road out, take a look at what happens down here. We start to see the gyre manifest itself once again, and a tropical wave wanders into where our rising motions are focused, and there you have it. And I really do think that is what it's going to take to get something to ignite down there. You take a look at the GFS. I'll go back to 12 Zulu first, show you this afternoon's model run. It shows the exact same thing. Shows a tropical wave getting into the system down there, and we begin to see development. Now, ignore the one that's back behind it. That's not going to happen. That is definitely the classic GFS bias there. But the key takeaway here is, given the setup that we have, and once again, something in the nick of time coming to dork up any favorability we had in the tropics to do something a little different than recurving tropical waves, that strong, abnormal front is going to come down and kind of throw a wrench in the whole situation. So what I think we're going to have to rely on is a culmination of different things. MJO is looking favorable. We're going to have to rebuild our moisture down there. We're going to have to rebuild the gyre. We're probably going to need a tropical wave to connect with the gyre, just like Helene and Milton did last year. This is not going to be a case of the gyre is going to be able to do it by itself. Earlier this morning on an Instagram Live, I used the analogy of think about when you – train and when you work out for competition or you're an athlete you worry you focus on your workouts that's the main priority then you focus on your nutrition but then for your nutrition if you're lacking you supplement with vitamins minerals protein drinks, creatine, glutamine, branched chain amino acids. You have a bunch of different supplements that go into your athletic, your fitness physique. Kind of the same principle here. We're not going to be able to rely on just food or a protein source, and in this case, the gyre or the MJO by itself. We're going to need things to mash together, and that's when I do think the Caribbean is going to begin to produce. Now, let's rewind the clock real quick and talk about this nor'easter that's making waves. See what I did there? up the east coast this is going to be about as non-tropical as you can get and some folks are really messing up exactly where this thing originates from let's go up to your 250 millibar winds look at that deep trough really dug in we've got a jet max about to round the base of the trough and really intensify how much lift we have on the leading edge of the nose of it and that's precisely where you get these baroclinic systems to form up look at how you're streaming here your streamlines really begin to fan out. That's that diffluence, the spreading of the air horizontally. As the air comes apart high up in the atmosphere, you got to get lift, rising motions to fill in the gap. And as a result of that, down at the surface, you start to get the development of a low pressure. I have the temperature advection pulled on here as well so you guys can see just how much dry, cooler air is going to be wrapping in on the back side of it. There's our low beginning to spin in the mid-levels, and then you're going to start to see warm air punching to the north. So this is definitely more of a baroclinic system with a temperature gradient to it. See the difference here? That is not tropical whatsoever. This is going to be our first mid-latitude, albeit it's a coastal low forming off the nose of the jet that's going to rock up towards the nose. You can even see the frontal bands attached to this thing. There's your cold front down here, and there's your warm frontal signature there, and then there's sloppical storm, possible hurricane Jerry on the right-hand side of it caught in the warm sector of this system. So regardless of what you want to call it, hybrid, subtropical, tropical, whatever, it's going to create some impacts up the eastern seaboard. We're going to get a lot of wind from it. You look at your mid-level flow, and even the warm sector especially as you wrap back into the coast we're going to have some pretty hefty winds and as a result the wave heights with this are going to be immense as well not too ridiculously high down here for the southeast or the mid-atlantic but still enough to be noticeable especially after all the rains we've received here in central and northern florida we're going to get another round of those puppies tomorrow and especially friday and then that easterly gradient with the winds pummeling our east coast perpendicular to the peninsula st john's is already in a moderate flood stage we're going to see more water piling up there's just going to be a lot of water let's put it that way and then as this feature begins to mature you get an occluded purple front to 
stretch out as it tries to stick with the jet stream. We're going to see the wind field expand and intensify. And as a result, we're going to have some pretty rough seas all the way up the eastern seaboard with that onshore flow also favoring, trying to push as much water inland as possible. Now, as we get ready to wrap up, these are the couple signals I'm still watching. So you notice down there between the 14th out to the 17th, we still continue to see a bit of a signal in the Bay of Campeche, the Western Caribbean, and the Eastern Pacific. And then here comes that other tropical wave right there, starting to get a little bit more model support as the MJO really begins to dig in across the Atlantic and we begin to shut down the East Pacific. I think once the Eastern Pacific especially shuts down, all bets are off. That's another piece of the supplementation I was talking about earlier. We just got to, you know the phrase, give it a little more time. These are your ensembles from the Euro earlier today. And you can see, you know, through time, we're really starting to pick up on a few extra signals. Looks like there could be a couple tropical waves. I saw a video not too long ago where somebody said, Atlantic is done. I That's why I never make bold claims like that, especially when you look at something like this. That's a heck of an MJO pass. That is almost a standing wave for the next 15 days. We are now getting into the more favorable forcing in the Gulf, the Caribbean, and then it sticks around with us all the way just to about before Halloween. I have not seen a graphic like this all hurricane season long. This is probably going to be the most promising signal we have gotten this entire time. And if you are unfamiliar with what the latest 46-day ensemble looks like, we're not quite done yet either. This just updated a couple days ago, updated yesterday, valid from the 6th. You can see that large pocket of favorable conditions for us through the midsections of October. We get a brief break, and then by about Halloween, we get another nice pulse that could open up for or the open up the possibility of some Thanksgiving shenanigans out there, both over the United States as this begins to transition more to the fall slash winter time frame, and then also in the tropics for close to home development. So again, you know, we haven't seen anything really big kick off yet, but so far, we're definitely realizing that forecast we made about October being the wild card. We have the most favorable upper level forcing we've seen all hurricane season long. We've got some crazy strong fronts coming down that could possibly disrupt the pattern or maybe even spin something up, ventilate the area down there and help to encourage some development. Who knows? At this point, we are in such an anomalous phase again, hashtag 2025, that we're going to have to take it case by case, day by day. And that's exactly where I could come in to watch your six and take a look at everything at a deeper level and then break it down to you here on the weather center so thanks so much for bearing with me it is 7 41 p.m i'm going to rapidly update and edit this video get it uploaded hopefully by eight o'clock i'll talk to you again very soon update coming out in the next day or two may do a live stream if anything big starts to trend but you all know the phrase until next time this is weather center nazario signing out